to make the video less boring, I just divided 20 questions analysis to two parts. Like first, I in the previous video, I analyzed the first 10 questions and now we're going to finish this um, examination. For the this question, again, we have three products, George, Elroy, and Jane. So labor is in short supply, 120,000 hours only. Okay. Again, the same dilemma, producing in-house or subcontracting or buying out. The same thing that we do, subcontracting costs like 55, 66, and $82. So I just copied these numbers. And then we, we compare it with only variable cost. So variable costs are the combination of material and labor cost. 15 plus 33 is going to be $48. 30, 28, 27 is going to be $57. And 22, 48 is going to be $60. So saving or what's the extra cost of buying? Extra is seven, extra nine, and extra $12 if we buy from out. Again, because labor in short supply, we need to find the extra cost of uh, the extra cost of uh, buying from subcontractor. Six dollars per hour, and labor is thirty-three dollars. So when we divide by six, we identify that for every unit of George, five point five hours of labor is spent. The same logic: twenty-seven dollars divided by six. 4.5 hours for every unit of Elroy and 48 divided by six for every unit of Jane, eight hours of labor is spent. So when we divide extra cost by the number of hours, we come up with how much extra should we pay for every labor hour. So this is the extra cost or saving. You can look at from either side. In the previous question, in this question, the question asked about what component should be purchased externally. In this question, it's asking about what product, I mean, George, how much of, how many of George should we produce in-house? So we can look at from either side. Uh, the logic is as simple. The least extra Cost is the one to buy first, to buy externally, because we have, we incur the least cost when we buy it externally. So we're saving 1.27, two and $1.5 if we buy externally. So we should buy, uh, because the least cost is for George, we should buy George first. George, if we can, we buy George from subcontractor and then, we buy Jane from subcontractor, and then only then we can buy Elroy from subcontractor. That means if we are if we only should buy Elroy last, which means we should produce Elroy the first. So because it costs the highest, it costs the most when you buy externally, we should produce it in-house the first. So Elroy is to be produced first. For 8,000 units of Elroy, for every unit, we spend 4.5 hours of labor. For 8,000 units, maximum demand, we are going to spend, so 36,000 labor hours. And then second, we produce gene. Uh, for gene, 900, 9,000 units for eight hours per unit is going to be 72,000 hours. Overall, uh, 108,000 hours spent. The maximum labor is $120,000. So we only have 12,000 hours of labor left. For 12,000 hours, we can only produce so for every unit, we spend 5.5 hours. So we can produce something about 2.1 something. 
2100 something. We only have this answer. So for the hours remaining, for the 12,000 hours remaining labor, we can only produce 2,181 units of George in-house. And what we do, let me change the color now again to this time blue. We're producing 2.181 in-house and the remaining from demand, we can buy it from externally, from subcontractor. For this question, payoff table, I really love payoff metrics tables. What's the decision? Okay, which option is selected on the minimax regret criterion? Okay, minimizing the maximum return, uh, minimizing the maximum regret. So the, the states are as follows. If for the outcome one is apparent, and we chose $32,000, so if the outcome is one and we went for option A with the contribution of 30,000, what's the regret? So if outcome one, the highest comes from this 40,000. So if we choose option A, we're losing 8,000 regret. If we choose option C, we're going to have 15,000. If we choose option D, we're going to have 18,000 regret. I mean, sub subtracting these values from the maximum contribution. And now, if it's outcome two, and again, which is option A, or if it's outcome two, the most contribution comes from 80,000. So if we choose op option A, we lose 30,000 regret. If we choose option B, we have 40,000 regret. If we choose option D, we have 20,000 regret. The same analysis for option outcome three. If outcome three, the most contribution comes from option A, so no regret. For option B, we're regretting how much? 30. 7,000, yes. For option C, 25,000. For option D, 23,000. Regret, because the most contribution comes from option A. And if we happen to choose option D, we're going to have 23,000 less contribution. This is a regret. Now, minimax regret criterion is that for option A, if we choose option A for any outcome, what's the maximum regret? Eight, 30, like 30 is the maximum regret, 30,000. If we choose option B, what's the maximum regret? 40, 37, we can maximum lose 40,000 contribution. If we choose option C, what is the maximum regret? 15, 25, or 25,000. If we choose option D, what's the maximum regret? 18, 20, 23. Maximum, we can lose 23,000 contribution. Minimax regret is that among these maximum regrets, which is the minimum? The minimum regret is by far $23,000, which is associated with option D. If we choose option D, we're going to regret the least. Our regret is going to be minimum. 13, <clears throat> it's about learning curve. Learning curve is frequently examined in ECC examinations and it's uh, comprehensively tested in March setting, 2022. The first unit took 106 labor hours and labor cost this much. Four units have been produced and it's taught 75% learning curve applies. What will be the expected labor hour of the fifth unit? only the fifth unit. To find the cost for fifth unit, firstly, we should find the time for the uh, fifth unit. Look, uh, time for exclusively fifth unit, 
is found as follows. Uh, total time for five units is found first. Total time for four units is found. And then when we subtract the second from the first, we're going to leave with only time for the fifth unit. Like how much it takes for the fifth unit alone is found by this formula. But we don't have any formula to find the total time for five units. We can only find the average time for five units using this formula. <clears throat> y equals x on the degree of b. This is learning curve formula. Y is the average time for x units. So x is number of units. A is the <clears throat> time taken for the first output. B is the learning index. Learning index is found by the logarithm of learning rate. So 75% divided by logarithm two. This is the scientific formula, which we should not bother further. <clears throat> so logarithm 0 0.75 in calculator gives us this value Then logarithm two. When we divide this, we come up with this learning index on a degree. So cumulative time to produce four units. Firstly, by this formula, we find average time for four, four units. The first time takes 160 hours multiplied by X is number of units or for four units, we use four. And on the degree, we use this learning index. So it shows us 90 hours. Average on average, every four for the first four units, we spend on average 90 hours per unit. So for four units, we spend 360 hours. Time to produce five units. Again, the same formula, but instead of uh, this figure, four, we use five. So it went down because learning rate, because of learning rate um, for every next unit, average time per unit, average labor time per unit decrease 82.039.18 hours per unit for the first five units. So total time for five units is this figure multiplied by five. And for 10, 410, 196 hours. And then 410.196 less 360 hours is going to give us extra 5.2 hours, which means exactly the time to produce only the fifth unit. We find the time. Now we multiply it by the labor rate per hour. Okay, <clears throat> for 160 hours, we paid $3,200. That means that implies that our labor is paid at a rate of $20 per hour. So for 5.2 hours, we pay $1,003. Point ninety two dollars. This is the uh, this is rounded up to one thousand and four a fourteen. It's a very easy one. Uh, purchase this uh, material for this cost and price material material price variance was adverse. Adverse means. Uh, we bought more expensively at a higher cost. We bought um, 6,850 6, kilos for this much, 32.195. And if we, 195 less 1,370, we come up with what should have been the standard cost for the actual number of kilos purchased. And when we divide it by actual number of kilos, we come up with 4.5. That is the standard price per kilogram. 15, market share variance. 
market share variance is very similar to sales volume variance. Okay. Budgeted this much, actual this much. Okay. Uh huh. The company would maintain 20% share. Uh huh. Market was only 90,000 units. So 20% share, 90,000 units is the whole market. And 20% is going to be 18,000 units. So if we produce 18,000 units, we would retain, we would maintain 20% market share. But actually, we didn't produce 18,000, we produced 17,000. So 18,000 required market share, 17,000 actual, 1,000 units adverse, of course. This is in units, but here it's, it's given in dollars. So we need to multiply units by standard profit. Standard profit, $50 price, for a cost, standard profit per unit is $10. For 1,000 units, it's going to be $10,000 adverse variance and we'll, with only answer B. 16, sales price planning variance. Oh, look, there is sales price planning variance and operating variance, operational variance. For planning variance, it's what we compare are these two um, budgeted sales price compared with revised sales price so multiplied by actual units sold so we budget to sell 900 units Standard price was 27. So the budget sales price is like $27. And then, uh -huh, by the end, in retrospect, it was decided that realistic standard selling price, this is the revised price, was $18. So realistic is $18. So because we overestimated the selling price, it's going to be adverse variance. $27, $18, like $9 per unit adverse, multiplied by actual number of units. How much we sold? 900 units have been sold. Multiplied by 900, it's going to be $8,100 adverse variance. Like adverse, 8,100. 17. What's the return on investment? Return on investment <clears throat> is going to be profit after depreciation. I use a hat and divided by net current assets plus non current assets. Net current assets means current assets less current liabilities. So investment is going to be the sum of these two 60 and 240 is going to be um, total assets less current liabilities, which is going to be uh, 50,000 profit before depreciation. Profit after depreciation is going to be 40,000. When we divide it by um, 6, 240, 300, how much is going to be? I think it's going to be 13.3. Am I correct? Or let me check it so the calculator. Yes, I am correct. For the 18, transfer pricing. It's a very debatable topic because if we sell at the lower cost, then the selling party is not going to be content. If we sell it at a higher price, then the buying side doesn't like it. So Profit A, uh -huh. could also sell the product externally for $30. Marginal cost of making eight, full cost 14, variable cost of one for sales and distribution to customers. Uh -huh. We should calculate what's the um, minimum cost and maximum cost. 
minimum cost is going to be variable cost plus lost contribution. So variable cost is $8. What's the lost contribution? Uh, if you sell it externally, certain selling price less. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Fourteen full cost less one variable cost again selling price again fifteen so minimum price is twenty three dollars maximum price is the okay thirty dollars but okay so then they negotiate between twenty three and thirty but here's the trick if we sell at thirty then the buying party doesn't like it if we sell at 23 then selling party doesn't like it because instead of selling at 23 dollars they could sell it outside market price of 30 dollars per unit what they do look if profit center a transfers the product to profit center b then they will not have to incur this one dollar variable cost for sales so they don't have to sell outside. So if instead of selling $30, they are minimizing, economizing, saving this $1. So selling at $29 would fit both parties <laughs> because uh, buying party would also have to buy it at $30 and they are here they are getting less, $1 cost saving the selling party is also winning because they are indifferent between 29 dollars without selling variable cost or 30 dollars with with selling cost so there both parties are happy and this avoids dispute 19 which are going to be measures for not-for-profit organization <clears throat> Not for profit organization, they are not actually interested in ROI. They are not interested in competition. So minimizing the cost and efficient resource allocation. Okay. <clears throat> Improving material usage rate. Material usage rate means how labor handled with the material. To improve this, we could give some training to production training for the production stuff, we could provide some training. Cheaper materials is going to give us favorable material price variance, but then usage variance is going to be again adverse because cheap material is easy to get into loss and it's difficult to handle. Labor will waste a lot of materials. Reduced sales price is not going to help. Altos mix of materials to a cheaper mix Again, cheaper mix means that the cheap quality material, which is hand hard, very difficult for labor to handle. So material usage is going to be adverse as a result. Only in the last option, if we provide some proper training with better training, probably they are going to improve material usage. So that is the end of the analysis for 20 questions. 20 mixed questions from throughout the performance management syllabus.